Okay, so real quick, guys, I have a video on this in the past, uh, but I keep seeing it over and over again, and I wanna really drive it home by getting the word out there to more and more people so we can prevent this kind of failure. So if you didn't know it already, the 09 through 14 F-150s, it doesn't matter what kind of engine you have in there, um, the 09 through 14 F-150s with a 6R80 6-speed transmission in them are having a, a real problem with the transmission cooler lines failing uh, due to age and fatigue, and on this one, due to rust. So as these vehicles are aging, these lines are just snapping, and they're bleeding out, and then the transmission will burn up quickly thereafter. So basically, by the time you realize that you're slowing down or a train is slipping, you're already out of fluid and the clutch pack with a torque converter, more commonly, is burnt up. And that's transmission time. The problem with it is transmissions are not cheap, labor's not cheap nowadays, uh, and you're supposed to change out all the coolers, including the radiator on here, unless you have a hot flusher. You, of course, need to change the transmission and cooler lines. So it adds up as well over $6,000 in the end uh, to do it and do it right. So. Where they usually fail is they fail at the quick connects. And I'll try to get you in here and focus and all that good stuff. So there's these quick connects right here. You'll see them in gray down there. I'm gonna focus in for you there. So these quick connects right here, that's what usually fails. So that connects the rear trans cooler lines to the front where it connects into the cooler and the radiator. And it's a little quick connect on there for the assembly line procedure, uh, you know, process. And that's where they snap. And it's not due to corrosion like you see there, the rust right there. Uh, it's usually down the aluminum side of it. It could be corroded or not. Uh, clean, shiny aluminum. And it'll just snap due to, I believe, metal fatigue. Um, so a lot of people out there in my last video they're like well that's an easy fix i wouldn't put the same old junky lines on there i would just cut it off the metal side and the metal side over there and i would just slip on a high pressure hose 15 clamps on there and i'll never have this problem again well like i said there's a reason why i change uh the entire line set out and this is why right here you know i don't know everything guys but when i'm talking in a video it's usually coming from experience and a lot of people can see that and realize that I'm not talking from a book or what I saw online, it's from experience. So right here again is another common issue with it. I see it enough where they look pretty raunchy, uh, but we're starting to see the cooler line, if I can get in here, the cooler line that goes underneath the radiator here, especially in the EcoBoost is tucked in here a little bit. You see it right there uh, because of the charge air cooler. Um, but you'll see it's pretty gnarly. I mean, the other side of this vehicle is a little rusty. Uh, for its age, but man, look at that. And then you can see once it gets that bad, uh, it's gonna start having pinholes, it's under pressure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, vibrations, uh, and it's gonna start leaking. So what happened on this guy, uh, this guy's vehicle, is they were you know driving along and everything was just gravy, uh, but it was slowly dripping out of there initially, and it was losing fluid. And you can see it collecting in the charge air cooler here, and all that, and then there's underbody shields that kind of collect and absorb it. So it's hard to see and, you know, and find it right away when it starts leaking like that. And then they're going down the road and this little drip, 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 turn into a squirter. And guess what? That thing just started squirting all over underneath there. And by the time they realized it, the trans was cooked. So the, the problem with it is that you know, again, I got the comment in the last video. Well, do you know how hydraulics work, buddy? Um, you know, they, you know, they're, the pressure's there or not. So once the pressure's gone, the clutch releases and it can't burn up anymore. What are you talking about? This is the problem. The fluid gets low. It doesn't lose it all Im immediately. Initially gets low so that now it's, it's, it's sucking air and still pumping a little bit of fluid from the pan. And it's partially applying that clutch, burning it up. Yes, that is how it happens. It's not a simple on and off situation, it's gonna be partially applied under load and it's gonna burn up. So when I got this one in, uh, they were at a couple other shops and you know, the, the other places didn't even catch the leak on here. The dealer didn't even catch the leak. Um, I went, the first thing I did when I, I went to go drive it and, and check codes and all that, I noticed it was really low on fluid because I could tell the way the vehicle's acting when I try to move forward or reverse. Great, popped out, went underneath there and checked the trans fluid level in there. It was at the tippity tip 
of the little dipstick that's down there. There's nothing in the pan. So this has been happening for a while, and I don't know how these other shops didn't catch that. Um, but yeah, that's how it happens. So it got that low where the pan was basically empty, sucking air and a little bit of fluid, partially applying clutches, burning the transmission up. So now because they didn't change lines or check on them and weren't very proactive, now we're looking at a six thousand dollar repair or so trans is not expensive labor's not cheap uh, the trans is expensive <laughs> labor's not cheap and then like i said you get, you have to change the trans cooler lines in this instance you better change the cooler because all that clutch material and it was thick has to go through these thin tubes on here and it'll plug up so you have to change that you have to change this line right here and that goes through a secondary cooler inside the radiator and that was a little bit bigger openings in there uh, but it still can plug up inside of there. Only fix for that is to change the radiator out. You see how this is all adding up? Yeah, it gets very expensive real quick. So it's well over $6,000 at this point because we didn't change trans cooler lines. And the big problem is a lot of it's you know seeping and dripping onto all these different shields underneath for sound absorption with the EcoBoost. So it's hard to spot it immediately if you're the owner of the vehicle. So that, I, this is why I want to put it out there. This is happening through rust and, and fat, metal fatigue and all that stuff. And just to get out there and really just change out the lines on there and be proactive if your vehicle has, you know, over 100,000 miles on it. Just do it because it's going to save you a huge headache in the end. And you're probably due for a trans fluid service anyways. Um, so you can just do it all at the same time and make it like new and maintain this trans. And if you do, this trans will reward you in the end, it'll keep going for a long, long time. Seeing it's well past uh, 200,000 miles, closer to 300,000, and they were just fine with proper fluid changes. So I wanna really you know, drive that home for you guys and put this out there again so we get out there and be proactive and save ourselves a little bit of money. Right now, everything's going up. People can't even afford groceries, so a, a, a transmission like this would be a hard hit on you guys, a lot of people anyways. Uh, so I just want to get it out there, and that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.